Welcome to This Week in Poker. On tap today, in studio, actor Bill Parks. Everyone's favorite tournament director, Matt Savage, joins us via Skype from the WPT Borgata Poker Open. Jess Wellman gives us this week's big poker headlines, and we reveal the optimum betting strategy on the turn for Seven Card Stud High Low. Stay tuned. gingers all the time on this week in poker in studio bill parks how's it going all right good you may recognize him from many things community better yeah. off ted bones yes that new aretha franklin the aretha commercial. franklin snickers commercial that's true heavy rotation yeah among many many other things the arby's commercial that's true you're kind of all over and you're gonna have a it looks like a couple more episodes of community that's up. true as well Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, get to, uh, we'll get to more with Bill after we get into poker headlines with Jess. But before we even do that, mm. Brian in the corner. Um, can, you, can you talk about our sponsor this week? I can. And Chops, I just want to say it's nice to have you back in the uh, studio. Yeah, it's nice I, to be back. No drugs? Are you still on drugs? Or? No drugs. I, yeah. I cut them off yesterday. Really? Yeah. Just decided. Cold turkey. Cold turkey. No more, as much as I love Soma and the painkillers, no more. Yeah. And I loved it. It was great. I understand why people get addicted oh, God, to this yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's it wears off after a while, and then you have to like to keep taking you know more uh, potent drugs. Oh yeah. yeah, I had the shivers. I was sweating. Yeah. It was brutal, and that was three days. Yeah. Brian in the corner. Our sponsor. You missed it last week. We have a new sponsor, Full Tilt Doubles Poker Championship. It's a uh, new TV show on uh, GSN. It's new this season, but they are on their uh, seventh episode this coming Saturday. And uh, have you watched it yet yourself, Chops? Yes, love it. It's, it's wonderful because it's to me it's not about the, the hands. It's all about the pairings. Yeah. You had Annette and Annie Duke were partnered together. And then this past uh, Saturday, uh, Benjamin, and we actually have a clip of this, but Benjamin and uh, Lindgren. That could be fun. Paired together. I missed that one. Paired together. Um, we'll run that one a little bit later. I think they're going to show a clip of it, but they... Uh, Benjamin has no points because it's all it's based on random pairings. Uh -huh. You get points. Lindgren didn't need any. He's got a lot of points to move on to the next phase. Uh -huh. uh, Benjamin was that zero goose egg. And, it's kind of uh, representative of their lives in general, isn't it? It <laughs> very very much so. And if they uh, maybe we don't have the clip, it's just funny seeing them side by side, sure. and then they they use their. Uh, you get to do a timeout. So Matt, I uh, haven't. I have it open but muted. Um, well, this is an interesting timeout. <laughs> Strategic. Making it look like there's some kind of decision here. You want to make them believe we have a VN? Yeah. That's why you did that? Yeah. So, uh, should I under bet or bet? Kind of standard continuation bet. What, what do you think? I think he's weak. Hmm? I think he's weak. So, just 5,500. Maybe I should make it even smaller. Yeah. 5,500, how much is there? It's like 14, 14, 15,5. Okay, 15,5, so you want to bet like what? 85. Brian, you brought up a good point. Genius use of a timeout. It was a great use of a timeout. Usually it's it's like a, a real decision, but that was just total bluff. I think they were talking about Erica, right? <laughs> Does she like when you... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking the whole time. I, I don't know, hats off to, uh, to David to be able to play yeah, no kidding. And hats off for Lingard for being able to go he's, unbuttoned he's, a few down and, and pull it off he's, legitimately. He's looking sexy. Anyway, watch the shows Saturdays, 9 p.m. And uh, Sundays, they're re-airing previous episodes at 6 p.m. From so. what I understand, this is a fairly interactive show. How can our viewers get in touch? Glad you brought that up, Chops. For our new viewers today, which we have a handful of, you can simply type a Q and a colon, and I need, I need something else to say besides a Q and a colon, because that's just, this just sounds uncomfortable. Type in a- They like it out there. A Q and a colon, and then uh, type your question, and we'll uh, hopefully get to it. Asian Spa, we, we, you say, you tweet that uh, you're asking, and we're not, we're not asking your questions, we're not seeing it, so try again. 
I wonder if Asian Spa doesn't realize maybe he's logged in as somebody else. We yeah, need to get Asian Spa on. Asian Spa, if you really want to reveal yourself, no mask, no just chat roulette penis bomb on us. Just <laughs> if, if you want to be on, direct message us on Twitter maybe. Yeah, if you want, if you want to be on the show, uh, private chat on the Ustream. Okay. And somehow or another, we'll make this happen. We got a lot of ground to cover. We are a little bit late. So let's get right to our poker headlines with Jess. Poker headlines with Jess. Do that again. I love it though. It's like <laughs> it's it's sketchy as Such hell. Such a great voice too. I know. It's like in t I, it's American Idol quality. Bill, Bill right now is going. What the? <laughs> what show am I on right now? Where's my publicist? Hey Jess, do you know Bill Parks? Like, do you guys know each other from the underground ginger community? I'm not allowed to talk about what happens in the meetings. Okay. Right. <laughs> we have secret handshakes and everything. <laughs> Jess, there was a lot, a lot of stuff going on this week. I know. And can I just say, like, last week we joked about me getting shanked. Yep. I really, it almost happened this week. It was pretty scary. It's, it's Atlantic City. I mean, seriously, we weren't kidding about it. But they, everybody said, Bor oh, Borgata's safe. You'll be fine at Borgata. It's not like they're going to storm the tournament floor and nearly kill you. Yeah. But they did? What happened? No. Are, uh, you, talking about, a... are you talking about the incident? Yeah, I'm talking about the incident. OK. Let's, let's lead with the incident. Let's talk about uh, the incident. So we're here at Borgata for the World Poker Tour event. And it's a, it's a big event. It set a record, 1,042 players. <laughs> um, and, and we were down day two, late in play, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Steve Buckner, whom we on the team affectionately refer to as Uncle Buck, and the people around here call Cuz, but he's a character. Yeah, he's a talkative kind of, fella, right? Yeah, he's a little Farha-esque, chomps yeah. on the cigar, talks to the players. So he won a big pot, jumps out of his seat and does like a straight up victory lap around the room, and starts kind of jawing with the guy that he, he beat in the hand, and then one of his royal birds, who had kind of snuck into the tournament area like a lot of people had and were watching uh chimed in telling the guy not to call the her friend a jerk and they started going at it a little bit and kind of out of the blue she asks are you jewish which sends off another player at the table not involved in the hand who jumps up out of his seat and gets in her face and it's like why'd you say that why would you say that and they're this close from each other and I can say I was not the only person who was watching who was fairly certain that she was going to get hit in the face and was surprised when it didn't happen. But tournament staff came in, broke it up, everything settled down. And after the fact, uh, Jeff Schwartz, the guy who was Jewish. the angry person yeah. in the hand. Um, <laughs> that's what I was wondering. That's, like, did he answer the question, was he Jewish? Yeah. Uh, I think so, because I was told by one of our other reporters that later he won a big pot and fist pumped with some guys at the table and uttered Jew power. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Either he has, he has a, an affection for the Hasidic crowd or <laughs> he is in fact Jewish. And I'm assuming, I'm assuming the uh, woman, the rail bird who uttered the remarks was not of the Hasidic faith. Now... Someone said they thought they heard her say, hey, I'm Jewish, which makes the situation that is pretty weird to begin with all the weirder. Yeah. I don't have that part confirmed. Everything else, though, it did happen. And thankfully, our camera guys caught it on tape. I was going to say, you can go to worldpokertour.com and see the photos of the incident, right? Yeah, we have some photos and some screen grabs, but we're saving the footage for the show. Okay. You know, you got to save the good stuff for TV. Right. And she's, I think the lady that said it looks sort of like she could be Snooki's mom. I mean, to kind oh, of paint, yeah. paint a picture. Well, Atlantic City is in New Jersey. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's pretty okay. tamed, really, for Atlantic City. Um, I, you know, I think people, when they play there, they, you know, I mean, it's very typical with the New Jersey crowd. Right. You know, nothing against our audience out there from New Jersey, but... But everything um, against them. Is yeah. this the most bizarre thing that you've seen... At a World Poker Tour event? At a World Poker Tour event? Definitely. Um, what, Jess, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I, I think so. I was mulling through my head any other options, but what it was just What about um, the Matt Stout and Alan Barry incident? Uh, these two do not get along. Uh, Alan Barry, for those who don't know, is another New Jersey native yeah. um, who he tends to tell it like it is. 
for lack of a better explanation. Um, so you either, he's like black or licorice. You either love him or you hate him. Uh, Matt Stout is someone who hates him. They were at the same table. It started, Matt just kind of said to his face, I'm just going to tell you what everyone else thinks about you straight up. Nobody likes you. You're a jerk. It continued. It ended up getting on Twitter for a little while, and they were Twitter warring back and forth. But then at the table, it escalated. Um, Alan kind of uh, needled Matt into calling him a piece of shit, and that resulted in a one-orbit penalty. So Matt was none too pleased to see Steve Buckner jump up and take a victory lap around the room and go penalty list. Yeah. Drama. It's kind of lame that instead of fighting about it, they tweeted about it. It was weird, too, because they were sitting there. They both knew they couldn't talk or they'd get in trouble because Matt got the penalty. So they're sitting there in silence. Alan had his noise-canceling headphones on for a while, and then they're just kind of tweeting under the table. I hate him. I think he's a jerk. But I I have to say, I think Alan would say it to his face and uh, in a heartbeat because that's just how he is. If if it came to blows, who would have won? Alan is not a big guy. Yeah, so. I was gonna say it's Matt Stout. Yeah. I think right, yeah. Alan's about as tall as me, and I am five two. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes those little guys though, they'll they'll they're go spicy. for the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> they're not afraid to fight dirty. No, actually, I think Alan said it today. He's like, I'll kick anyone's ass, or I'll fight anybody and get my ass kicked. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he knows. Uh, physical Jersey. fight not his forte. Yeah. So uh. He's the- for those people that care about chip counts and chip leaders and so on, who's uh, leading right now? Uh, it is Giuseppe Pantaleo. They're filing back in from dinner break right now. There are 58 players left. And is he's he from got, like, New Jersey point. or Italy? He's German. Okay. Oh, wow. Too Go sure. figure. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, J-Dags was the chip leader to start the day. Uh, John Diagostino, he is exactly where he started the day at 681, which is actually right about average right about now. Uh, Giuseppe's ahead with 1.6 million. Everyone else is kind of grouped together, 1.2, 1.3. We got a lot of those people, but no dominant chip leader to speak of just yet. Got you. And, And they're playing down to 27 tonight? Yes, so we've got a ways to go. Uh, this is a deep stack structure, um, and we've got 30 players to lose, basically, and quite a bit of time to get there. So if you had to blame somebody for how late you're going to work tonight, would it be Matt Savage? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Why would he? No, uh, Matt has nothing to do with uh, the structure at this event. Uh he advises on that kind of stuff, I believe, but I don't think that he set this one out. So political. What else is going on? Because there's a lot going on. World Series of Poker Europe is really cool, I've got to say. We've got some great stories. Bracelet number one went to Phil Locke, who took down the first event and his first bracelet, along with like $260,000, roughly what it translated to. He's having a really hot month, and uh, that's the big story. Then... Jeff Lissandro wins event number two, uh, gets his fifth bracelet and his first non-stud bracelet. And you had Chris Bjorn and Willie Tan both make both final tables. They were at the event one and event two final tables. Event three just wrapped up. Thought we were going to get one of the first WSOP repeats we've seen in in a long time, but J.P. Kelly ended up finishing second to um, Stuart Shelley. Sorry, I've been on the floor all day, so I've not been keeping tabs on that one as well. But he ended up finishing second, which is still an impressive feat. He won two bracelets last year, runner-up finish this year. And they are doing the heads up now. Last week I said I didn't think they would get to 64. I was full of it. They destroyed 64. They have like 108 people. That's great. I wouldn't have expected that kind of turnout either. And the good yeah. thing about J.P. Kelly not winning is now we don't have to have that discussion if he's, like, the best young player out there. We can just avoid that one right now. It's good. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, w. Coop is getting better, too. They've got some good names. Jason Mercier won the 1K that started Sunday, finished yesterday, last night, got $435,000 for first. Yeah, speaking of um, best young players. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Daniel named him best young player in his most recent blog entry, along with a couple other people, but Jason was on that list. How, he's uh, only 23, right, Jason? I believe so, yeah, yeah. 23, maybe 24. Already has uh, 5 million in tournament winnings. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty sick. Yeah, it's gross. Well, and now he has 
an EPT title, a WSOP bracelet, a W Coop title, an F Tops jersey, and really the only thing he's missing is a WPT title for what what I'm going to call the quintuple crown. Yeah. <laughs> Does he play a lot of WPT events? I don't recall has, seeing him in a, in a lot. He has made an effort now because he wants that title to say right. he's a triple crown winner. He tries to play whenever he can. He obviously didn't play this one because he had such a good run at London last year that it would conflict, but he was at Legends. I believe he played Bellagio Cup, and I, I've seen him at Foxwoods. I even saw him at Indiana, which was one of the smaller stops. So he's trying to fit him in where he can. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, other good winners in W Coop. You have Dan Martin, Jason Potter, uh, a W, a Team Poker Stars pro named Anders Berg, and you have Ray's Once, who is raising some eyebrows for the tacky transition there as to who he might be, because the rumors on Two Plus Two are that it's Phil Ivy. What? And his name's what? Ray's Once. Ray's, Ray's Once. Once. Okay. Interesting. Uh, can, don't have it confirmed. I know Justin Bonomo put something out on Twitter saying, funny that the top two finishers in the Poker Stars 25K high roller heads up are from a rival poker room. And I just looked to in preparation for the show and he had deleted it. So maybe, maybe he has faulty information, but rumors swirling that it might be Phil Ivey, another name throughout there. It might be David Benjamin. Well, we'll just uh, contact Phil Ivey's publicist, and she'll get right back to us. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure they'll, divide, they'll yeah. divulge that one in no time. Um, obviously, yeah. we don't know. That's just the rumor. Totally unsubstantiated. Nobody reported it as Phil Ivey, but an interesting note. Yeah, for sure. All right, Jess. Well, do you still have Matt Savage with you? I do have. Matt's, I think, tweeting away or something, but I can. I think he's, he's on Ustream, right? He's in the chat room. He's in the chat room. He's let's, get a, let's get Matt queued up. Just as I know the tournament's getting started again, and he might. Yeah, I've got to get back out on the floor, but we'll get Matt in my seat and be good to go in a minute. Okay. All right. Thanks. So, Mercier winning a W Coop. Kid's good. Yeah, really good. He's like the best. Like Jess said, I mean, EPT title. He's won two uh, high roller events, um, World Series of Poker bracelet. So, yeah. yeah. That's why, like, we were talking, like, you know, JP Kelly, that's great that he won two WSOP bracelets, but really doesn't compare it to like a Mercier. No, not even close. And yeah. and not to diminish it, because it's two more WSOP bracelets than, yeah. than we have and everybody here has. Yeah. But uh, it's not necessarily, you know, the big fields are like the more exclusive, even like mixed events. He's he's still obviously a great player, yeah. but it's not anywhere near the if level. If he was at a final table you, and he was the only one that you knew, it's still a lackluster final exactly. table, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, sorry, uh, what was his name? I don't know. Homer. Homer, yeah. on, uh, on our site, who was commenting away. Uh, it was lackluster, Homer. It was very lackluster. So, as they get Matt Savage ready and prepared, Brian? Still, Bill, Bill's still going, what am I doing? <laughs> I, know, I was like, sorry, man. He's like, <laughs> but have you been to Atlantic City? <laughs> I have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You used to live in New York City, so you I did. probably took the bus down. I would and take the bus for $17, and then they give you $11 in slot yeah. tokens. Have you been stabbed before? <laughs> uh, no, but I have felt threatened for my life. Yeah. Just yeah. being there. Did you watch Boardwalk Empire? No. It was really surprisingly good. I was expecting a, a flop. Did you watch it? No, no. Okay. It was on last night, right? Or Sunday, Sunday yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're you know, familiar, the new HBO series with Scorsese. You know, oh, right, yeah. Buscemi as the lead. Even though it turns out, like, whatever, five foot, nothing, 100 pound Buscemi is playing. Yeah. Somebody who in real life was like six foot one, 250, like linebacker size. Right. Right. But yeah. whatever. Uh, it was still surprisingly really good. Okay, cool. Check it out. Look at that. See one, uh, one Matt Savage. Hey guys, how you doing, Matt? Doing great. No pressure, Matt. From what we understand, this has actually made its way to the homepage of the UStream website. Excellent. So there's like seventy thousand million people watching this right now. That's I mean, big what time. are we up to right now? Hundred fifty. Um, Hundred fifty. We're breaking records. <laughs> how? Excellent. Uh, Everybody how, tuned out when I got on. How has, uh, how has the WP2 Borgata Poker Open been so far? Minus, of course, all of what seems like a lot of drama. Uh, there's been some drama. I actually think that's a good thing for the show. Uh, it's going on right behind me right now, as you can see. Yep. Probably breaking all kinds of uh, Nevada or New Jersey gaming laws by doing this, but uh, <laughs> we're doing it anyway. And uh, it's been going very well. 1,040 players uh, for a WPT event. 
that's a record. So we're real excited about that. You know, the new season's coming out, a lot of new changes. So uh, excited about how it's going. It seems like the player response to the lower binds has been pretty good too. Obviously, you know, given the turnout, but uh, have have they talked at all about maybe adding more and more lower buy-in uh, tournaments to the WPT slate? Well, it's definitely uh, you know one of the considerations. The uh, bike went down to five thousand; right. they almost doubled their amount of players uh, for their event. So I think that's something that uh, might be happening. Um, I I also think that we have a. A conference call with all the partners after this and they're going to rave about the numbers so some of the other places might think about doing the same thing okay uh brian remind our viewers before we go any further i'm sure they've got a lot of questions for matt how can they get in touch very simple just use your uh, ustream chat box type in the letter q a colon and then uh, type away your question and i'm i'm was reading in the uh, i was actually reading the twitter feed and i was laughing at uh Matt actually answering Alan Kessler's question already. Yeah, what, was, uh, about, what, was, what was the question I think, was, I think it was something about hair, but Alan Kessler <laughs> asked uh, if you're considering changing your faulty limit structures. Yeah, I mean, they're not faulty. They're actually very good. Yeah. The players that play those events like them. So, I mean, he wants me to, to make a uh, $200 tournament that lasts about three days, and I'm not going to do it. So. Uh, you know, basically for all the nits out there, it's not for you. Yeah. Uh, the tournaments, uh, you know, have play that's meaningful in the beginning and uh, a lot of play in the end when it matters the most. And that's the way I like to structure my tournaments. Has, has Alan ever suggested something to you that you were like, that's a great idea? Oh, yeah. Alan has a lot of good ideas. I, you know, we go back and forth a lot and, uh, you know, it seems like we disagree on everything, but we don't. We actually have the same uh, feeling about a lot of the way the structures are done around and, uh, you know, some of the posts that he makes about uh, issues in the poker industry make sense, so I agree with him quite a bit. If you could describe Alan Kessler in one word, what would it be? <laughs> I think you already did. <laughs> NIT, it's a three letter word. <laughs> Doesn't score very well in Scrabble. <laughs> and you just came from, uh, were you at the Commerce? You just got to Borgata last night, right? Yeah, I was just here. I took a, I got to the airport at 5 a.m. yesterday and uh, didn't get out of there till about 2 o'clock because of delayed flights. And I got to Borgata around midnight last night, went straight to the B bar and murmur and had a good time uh, dancing until five in the morning and got up early this morning for the start of day number three here. Nice. And, and none of the, uh, the fights that happened yesterday happened under your watch, right? You would No, have... unfortunately I wasn't here. It would have been fun to watch. Yeah. Would you let that stuff progress like it did or would you step in? No, definitely step in. You got to stop any of that stuff. You don't really need uh, people, spectators, jumping in uh, under the rails and getting involved with players in the tournament. They're playing for a lot of money here, almost three quarters of a million dollars. So uh, you want these guys to be focused and be able to be focused without having to deal with, uh, I guess, Jersey Shore girls. Yeah. <laughs> Talk a little bit about the, the detox series that you were recently involved with, because it kind of seemed like it came out of nowhere, but was quite a success. Yeah, I mean, we had a, a little series over at the Hard Rock um, basically, it was kind of the going away party for the uh, poker room because they uh, moved it like the next day to a smaller location, but a better location. So um, I think this, the tournament turned out really well. We made the guarantees on the first and the last event. But, uh, you know, in the end, we'll see if it goes forward. Uh, it's something we can build on for the next time at the Hard Rock. What have just maybe you've heard something, maybe you haven't. But have you heard Pokerati had put out there recently that, you know, there was going to be a sale of the Rio, uh, maybe that the WSOP could be moving locations. Yeah, you're a guy that's in the know. What have you heard? Um, uh, I've heard that that was just a rumor, that the Rio has says that they, were not, that they have not been sold. Um, obviously, uh, the World Series, I think, is a big part of uh, their revenue during those uh, the summer months. And I think that the Rio realizes that. So I know they don't want to lose that, um, even though I know they're Harris property. And wherever it goes, they're going to have that. But obviously, if they move it to Caesars Palace or to Hollywood, uh, Planet Hollywood like they're talking about, parking is going to be a major issue. And uh, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, I think that's one thing we always say with the Rio. Like, sure, it's not the best casino, but it's, it's super nice being able to pull up in that parking lot yeah. and um, easy access in and out. Good buffet. Definitely. Yeah, good buffet. Seafood good buffet. buffet, yeah. yeah. Kessler will tell you about the buffet. You can get there for a $2 uh, buffet if you have that ticket. A <laughs> uh, couple other questions from uh, <laughs> uh, I guess a couple 
how is the poker world keeping up with us pimps? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, but we have uh, Irv, what's his name? Irv Gotti in this tournament, uh, the, the producer of uh, Murder, Inc. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He's playing this tournament. So he just did be, an interview, right, that's on the, yeah. the site? It must be pimpalicious. It's a good, it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. So, Matt, the, the World Series of Poker Europe's going on. You used to be the tournament director back, like, in the Moneymaker days when it was at Binion's. Uh, would you say, I mean, do you like where the World Series of Poker has gone over the last couple well, of years? Or? I mean, obviously, I love the, the growth, and I think that uh, that's the major uh, component of it. I think the fact that it's grown to be so big is obviously good for the poker industry. Um, I don't like the fact that some of the tradition is gone, but, uh, you know, tradition isn't the, the biggest factor when you're playing for, you know, seven, eight, nine million dollars for first place in the main event. So, you know, tradition kind of goes out the window, but it really feels like a poker factory to me over there and it's not you know it doesn't have any of that same feel that it did back when i was working at it back at binions yeah definitely yeah you know it's uh you know it's kind of a good and bad on one side it's always good to see a little bit of the mainstreamization of uh of poker which i think the wsop has done a pretty good job but uh it's definitely been sanitized a little bit or you know to your point even back in the binion days well binions definitely couldn't support it anymore size wise that uh it's just I don't know. You know. You're missing a little bit of personality to that. How does how does what you're doing with the World Poker Tour compare to what you were doing with the World Series? Well, you know, my job with the World Poker Tour basically started with uh, me trying to reconnect with the players, reconnect with the property. I think the World Poker Tour had gone a little bit away from uh, you know being in touch with what's going on, and I, and I really wanted to focus on bringing the players back, uh, doing some new things, changing the show up uh, to a unique style. I think we've done that, and. Uh, I think it's going to really show in the new season. Uh, good question here from, from Who Jedi. How do you feel about bracelets being awarded outside of Vegas? I don't like it. I don't think it's like a real bracelet. I mean, you know, the World Series Poker has a name, so yet they could just add on every year. They could have WSOP Asia, WSOP Latin America, and next thing you know, there's, you know, bracelets year round. And I just don't think that's a good direction. Do you, I think that, you know, the, the World Series Poker was founded in Las Vegas, and that's kind of what it's about. So I don't think those bracelets are as valuable. Um, you know, Phil Locke has a bracelet now. Great. But, uh, you know, he didn't win it in Las Vegas where the tournament started. Yeah. I mean, but as far as, like, the World Poker Tour, do you see it lessening the prestige when you offer lower buy-in events? Say you go, you know, you continue to offer $3,000 buy-in events? Well, I think it's more uh, hurtful when it, you're, it's against capped, by, uh, capped uh, fields. Uh, yeah. They had a capped field over there. They have had a, a couple fields that were capped. And because of that, you know, I just think it, it loses some of its prestige, and it's not an open event for everybody to play on. And are they only capping it based on it being the, the, the hotel properties yeah. for? Yeah, the yeah. London clubs, uh, they're not very big, unfortunately. And, and because they're not very big, they can only fit so many uh, tables. I understand them having to cap it for that reason. But, uh, again, that's a different factor, getting a bracelet out of those events. Good one from uh, Michael A. Reed. What is the next big thing on the tournament scene? Um, you know, I'm always trying new things. At the Commerce, uh, we've had some different events. The Ironman event has gone over pretty well. Uh, this is a tournament without any breaks, and uh, meals served at the table. Uh, we just had one uh, last week that went uh, about 20 hours, which was fun, because uh, I stayed up for the entire event. I, I have um, to the, say, real quick, I have to say that one thing about, like, I love the Ironman idea, I love the endurance of it, but... Just the fact, like you brought up the eating at the table, like that's one thing I don't like at the commerce is when people eat at the table, they put food in their <laughs> mouths, they yeah, get their hands yeah. all greasy, right. they touch the chips. Um, I don't know, if yes. you, can you, do you require the players to at least wash the, their hands? Definitely, yeah, okay. we have uh, those uh, napkins, handy naps <laughs> standing by. And we do have a guard stationed at the bathroom to make sure they wash their hands when they're running back out too. That's a good so. idea. <laughs> it yep. works. Yeah, the old the old Tiffany Michelle clause as far as uh, eating food at the table. Yeah, exactly. it's never it's never a good thing. Uh, you're getting a lot a lot of questions. I think more questions than uh, anybody else. Brian, what else is coming in? I, I can't even keep up with them. Uh, what is the next big thing in the tournament scene? Well, that, Just no, that did that was... one. <laughs> we talked about that. We you know another thing we're doing is a reentry events to the commerce, which are small buy-ins uh, with big guarantees. We just had a hundred dollar buy-in that paid a hundred thousand to first. And uh, that's the biggest ever, almost times three. Uh, so, you know, those type of things, to get the, the newer players and the 
amateur players in to play for big money for small buy-ins. I think that's kind of what I want to focus on in the next uh, few months. Yeah, and what about the um, streaming the the final tables like you've done with the detox poker event? Yeah, I mean, Ustream's been great for that. Uh, it's one of those things that I'm trying to do in more and more series. Uh, Rob Perlman, V-Rob, is the one that hooked that up for me. He's done a good job with it, uh, you know, making it accessible for everybody to watch. And I think, you know, it's it's not the greatest thing because it's from a distance, but uh, at the same time, people that have friends and family around the world that want to watch them compete for these prizes, uh, it's a great thing. Great. Brian, you got anything else? We, maybe we could do it right now on the air, live Rush Poker Tournament. A live, I saw could, that. That was, he, I think, an Alcant Hang suggestion. Could he, uh, could Matt, could you figure that out? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd love to do a live a Turbo Tournament, a live Turbo uh, Ironman event. I think that'd be great. And Matt, you know, as far as uh, right now, the midterm elections are coming up. You know, a lot of talk with HR 2267. You're with the Commerce. I know you're not the spokesperson necessarily for them, but do you have anything to add as far as their battle with the PPA and, and going against the uh, legislation? I mean, let's just say I see both sides of the issue. I mean, I really am not allowed to comment uh, too much, but, uh, you know, I do see both sides of the issue. And uh, while I, you know, support all the poker players out there, I also understand uh, where commerce has kind of an issue with what they want to see done. And, uh, you know, I want to see how it plays out. But again, I really think the problem for me is, you know, that, you know, one side's throwing around the word monopoly, the other side's throwing around words like, uh, you know, illegal, and I think both of those words could be uh, hurtful to the main goal, which is to get online poker legalized. Right. Well, you definitely can see both sides of the issue. I mean, you kind of got to say commerce is wrong, though, right? <laughs> um, I cannot say that. i uh, still under contract for two more years with commerce, <laughs> so uh, I cannot, definitely can't say that. And, and real quick, because you know, like, I know you've had your hand in so many different uh, tournaments and, and poker rooms. Like, Name all your clients right now that, you, that you're working with. <laughs> um, I'm working with the Commerce Casino. I also have a year-round contract with the Bay 101 Casino up in uh, Northern California. I'm working with the Asian Poker Tour. I'm the executive tour director of the World Poker Tour. I'm doing World Poker Tour Marrakesh, uh, World Poker Tour Amnaville, and, uh, you know, Hard Rock. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll have another series. Um, and working on a few other things on the side that... Uh, should be upcoming. So you're kind of um, like the Ryan Seacrest of poker. <laughs> yeah, I know. I kind of have my hand in everything, but you know, it's keeping me busy, and I like that. And uh, I would like to spend some more time at home, but at the same time, I'm uh, enjoying it while it lasts for sure. Yeah, I mean, where do you where do you go from here? I mean, do you uh, have, do you ever want to go back to the World Series of Poker? Or um, I would, you know, I'd love to. I always say that I'm open to it. I think that uh, the fact that uh, it's kind of become pretty corporate, uh, I understand that side of it. And, you know, the fact that they want their top guy working for Harris year-round. And, uh, you know, I'm not able to do that at this time. And, uh, you know, I respect the job that Jack is doing. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind working with Jack at any time. I think uh, the World Series Poker is the biggest event, and I'd like to be a part of it. Final two questions for you. Uh, how great has it been to have the Royal Flush Girls around as almost daily presidents at these events? Uh, Royal Flush Girls have been fun. I mean, they keep it fun for everybody. They kind of keep it lighter. Uh, you know, they're not uh, poker focused all the time, and it doesn't keep the players focused on the poker. So at Don't the same time, I think that it's, it's been good. I mean, they, they bring a lot to the table as far as uh, the appearance of the show, and I think you're going to see a lot of that in the new season. And uh, your favorite thing about this, a lot of changes this year to the World Poker Tour, favorite change? Uh, favorite change, I think, is probably the return of Kimberly Lansing. I think her being back is going to provide a different aspect to the show. Uh, she's really polished. She was on the show the other day with you guys, and you can see that not only is she uh, great looking, but she's also great uh, personality, and I think that's really going to come out in the new season. Great. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. We definitely want to have you on again. Okay. Anytime. And uh, maybe when we get our multi-Skyping going, have a little heads-up debate with you, and Ka with you and Chainsaw. Oh, that would be great. I'd love to do that. We should do that on the show. I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. Great. <laughs> thanks again, Matt, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks a lot. How you doing? All right. You have been the sport. <laughs> that guy seems like a good guy to know. Yeah, he he's got uh, his hands and everything. Yeah, he's like super connected. He's right. actually he is the guy that um, pretty much runs the show with the WPT Invitational, the celebrity event yeah. every March, yeah. and um, he's been nice enough to put us in. And yeah, definitely a good guy to know. Yeah. You played that. I did right? twice. Mm -hmm. How'd you do? <clears throat> uh, the first two years ago, I, I knocked out Mike the Mouth Matisau. 
How drunk was he? Uh, oh, he was. He was uh, he was running his mouth. Yeah, I think yeah. I actually remember that two years ago. Yeah, how, how I think they were. Uh, he was a lot, or maybe yeah. was it two or three years ago? I think it was two years ago. It was like him and Flack were yeah, yeah and back were, and forth. I think they were picking. You know, Lane on, Flack, huge douchebag, but yeah. <laughs> runs his mouth. But I think they were picking on um, Hollywood Dave, and they kept calling him Hollywood, Hollywood Dan, <laughs> which was pretty funny. So I think that's what they call him for now on. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so you've played in the in the Slub Invitation a few have. times. This year I got knocked out by an L.A. Lakers cheerleader. Yeah. Those are worse ways to go. Yeah. So, you are uh, on a lot of stuff. You've got a good agent. I do. You're busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Denny, Tim, Jason. And you're on one of our favorite shows, I think, uh, Community. Oh, probably uh, the funniest show. The, on, definitely yeah. the funniest new show. And I, yeah. I, I don't know, we've talked about it. I think it's the funniest show, <laughs> yeah. period, yeah. on TV right yeah. now. Mad Men might be the best show, but I think Community is is the funniest. Yeah. So it's a great comeback for Chevy Chase, I think too. Huge Chevy, comeback yeah. for Chevy Chase, yeah. and just just hilarious in general. So how'd you get hooked into what is now? I mean, you've got kind of like a bunch of different not necessarily roles or characters, but right. you've you've played different different know, parts, parts uh, yeah. all with different character names. Yeah, I was actually I wrote down <laughs> some like. If you go to IMDb, uh, uh -huh. man with a plastic bag, otherwise otherwise known as Penis Man, I think, right? Yes, yes. And then Jinxy, Chunky, Crazy Willy, Angry Gary, Mean Kid, Condom Water Balloon Man. That's my favorite. So, yeah. That was the one that jumped out on the page when I saw that one. Nice, nice. <laughs> Yeah, I've played quite an array of characters. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So the the um, new season of Community starts uh -huh. this Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you're you're going to be on the not this week, but second. next week. Right, the second week. Uh, so not this Thursday, next Thursday. Yeah. Okay. And can you yeah. say what your role was, or uh, again, a dude? <laughs> <laughs> Is there what will it say like on when it's on uh, IMDb? It'll say dude number one or student <laughs> number two, things like that. Yeah. Does that piss you off at all? Like, are you are you just happy to be employed with? Uh, a little of both. Yeah. I can't complain, yeah. but uh, you know, be nice if they gave me a name one day. <laughs> yeah. Happy to be there. Your name's Robert Paulson. <laughs> Uh, we, should we run a clip just so, Brian, what clips do we have? Oh. Let's run a couple clips. We have we'll uh, clips. Snickers commercial. Definitely go Snickers commercial. Let's yeah. run Snickers commercial. All right. Can we turn the AC up? I'm dying back here. It's on. Can't you feel it? Can you feel that? Oh. <laughs> Jeff, eat a Snickers, please. Why? Every time you get hungry, you turn into a diva. Just eat it so hey, we can all coexist in here. Turn into a diva. Mm -hmm. Then your system break your pants. Okay. Thank you. Better? Better. Will you get your knees out of the back of my seat? <laughs> you're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Are you getting recognized for that? Are people, like, are you getting pointed out for that one? Because oh, they're running the hell out of that. Right, yeah. Probably, yeah, a little bit more so than anything else, I'd say. Did Aretha have some body odor? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. I look like I have body odor in that thing. That beard is out of control. I did not realize how ridiculous that was. You know, you probably just got divorced. You were going through the phase. <laughs> you decided to grow it out. Yeah, it happens. It does. Yeah, no, but I mean, in a lot of the clips that we've seen, and unfortunately, Lionsgate removed your reel. Of uh, what? YouTube. Anyway. Speaking of YouTube, did. actually, I read on your bio that you were on Showtime at the Apollo <laughs> many years ago, singing Rapper's Delight, juggling bowling balls, and I thought it was a joke, and I couldn't find it. True story? That is a true story. How long ago? Um, I used to watch that. When oh, I, was I, in I, New York. I used to love that show, yeah. like 10, like when, 15 like, years ago, maybe? Probably like 1990, 91, 92. Yeah. I watched that stuff. And yeah. I had a life, too, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got roped into it because you'd be watching SNL, and then Showtime yeah. at the Apollo would come on, and then you just... Can, can you sing a few bards of, of the theme song for us? It's showtime. Here we go, singing again. At the Apollo. Um, yeah, that was uh, quite a time. I juggled a bowling ball, a torch, and a knife, and I wore a red Adidas jumpsuit a la mm -hmm. Royal Tannenbaums. Uh -huh. and, um, and as soon as I went up, I had a big red afro. Were we trying to relate to the crowd? At all? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that they would connect with that, and uh, sometimes they were like 
for the white guy, they were somewhat nicer sometimes. It depends. Like, it, dep it really yeah. depends. Yeah. Sometimes they were yeah. brutal. Yeah. 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 And then sometimes they were like. Like if the, if like the white guy, guy had some soul, right. you know, right. like unexpected soul, they right. would. Yeah. I thought I had une uh, uh, unexpected soul, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but apparently not. Um, the second I got out, well, I guess I should have rehearsed more. I did not know that Rapper's Delight, I should have known that because it's probably a 20 minute song <laughs> has about a three minute intro. Yeah. So I was I wanted to go run out, rub the log right when it started oh, going. Yeah. I said hip hop <laughs> hip it. Well, it just starts doing the drum beat, right? right? And and then the guy on the side of the stage is like, go, go, and I'm like, oh no. So <laughs> I rub the log and I run out and it's still doing the t -t 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 and I'm like, oh no. So then I just start jazz hands. Then I start <laughs> <laughs> very close. I, I my I had a uh, bowling ball in this hand and a, and a torch and a knife in this hand. So otherwise I would have been doing jazz hands. But then I kind of started like clapping with these items and was like, come on, Apollo. And then, <laughs> you, you, you know it's going bad. <laughs> You're doing that. Oh, it was no good at all. And then, and so I got some of the crowd. I think some of them were like, oh, this is unexpected. They wanted to yeah. like this white boy. And then before I even could start juggling, before the song even started, they turned the siren on. If you can find the footage, which yeah. very few people have. Yeah. It, uh, maybe my mom and a couple yeah. other people. Um, they turn the siren on, so the crowd automatically starts going wop wop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then the guy, the guy didn't actually come down, jump over the edge, and start tap dancing because I finished yeah. before that could happen. I caught okay. the bowling ball on the back of my neck, threw the knife under my leg. How heavy was the bowling ball? Uh, I think it was a six pound bowling ball. Oh, right. Who was hosting back then? That was Monique. Monique. Okay. Monique, and she goes. And this is the jugular, Mr. Bill Parks. She called me a jugular. Yeah. Like it's a jugular name, <laughs> not a jugular. <laughs> that was funny. So the reason why we have you on the show is um, we know you play the Shannon Elizabeth home game, or you've played it before, and we really want to get down to this whole <laughs> rake This business. whole rake <laughs> <laughs> So, like, is she really... Bitch collecting rake! <laughs> <laughs> camera on Bill <laughs> at her last game. We're going to show, that, show the footage, right? But you've played it before, right? I played the game. Yeah. And uh, she's, she's told us that she does the rake, so you can... <laughs> <laughs> she well, told us she's taking 25%, so it's cool. She was not there the night that I went. I had a friend come uh -huh. to town, and I was like, you know, you have a friend so come to town. So she's running it, and she's not even there? Yeah, she's got some kind of whole operation Apartment going on. i got to be careful what I say. Yeah. That's what I'm over here. This, is, this is not recorded. Yeah, <laughs> We don't, we don't archive them. Um, it goes into the ether. What is that? <laughs> um, and then I lost like a little bit of money there. Yeah. Um, because something of like that. <laughs> yeah. And my buddy fortunately did well. He gained about as much as I lost. So I was like, whatever. He's in from Virginia. Show him a good time, right. you know. Um, and then after, he was like, oh, they were kind of taking a little something, something. And then, like, a week later, I saw something on Perez Hilton about the whole yeah. thing going yeah. down. And I was like, oh, man. So I haven't been back there yeah. since. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Does she have dealers there, or is it like? There was a, there was a couple people. Uh, Did she order Papa John's? Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, they yeah. had, like, uh, pizza rolls and, like, all kind of good stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. this is great. Now I know what was yeah, financing really? yeah. was my 25%. Are you playing in a lot of home games? I, I know you're busy doing the commercials and TV shows. Yeah, but... I haven't been playing as much as I'd like to, um, yeah. but sometimes I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a, a really quick shout out to Kev Math for the CC's joke. That was fantastic. Uh, well done. Totally. Back yeah. to. <laughs> Is it no. when, when you are these? Um, because I've noticed, like you know, we play some of these charity poker tournaments, like at the Commerce, and, yeah. and it's almost always a good percentage of actors, and it's you know, it's guys like Hank Azaria it's, or um, mm -hmm. right. you know, Kevin Pollock, but then yeah. it's also a lot of guys that pop in, you know, pop up in shows. And <laughs> sure. I mean, is it, is that mostly what the home game is? Is it mostly celebrity types, or is it? Yeah, um, it just varies, you know, because it just. Somebody brings a friend, wow. yeah. and then you run into random people. One time I was at a, a, a home game, and this guy sits down across from me, and he's like, and it was uh, Josh Peck from Drake and Josh, and uh, he was like, oh, I know you. And I was like, 
Oh, you probably know me from my work as Mean Kid Number One on a yeah. little show called Drake and Josh. I don't know if you've seen it. A condom water balloon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but that was his yeah. show that I was on. I did one episode of. Yeah. So it's funny. Yeah, I'm glad he does that because I actually do that when I'm at those tournaments. Like I'm always like I recognize that guy from somewhere. <laughs> right. and I always feel bad. And I think we just established with Sam Levine is you don't ask that person like what are you on? Right. Like it's kind of right. it's not polite. I yeah, I know. I don't know if this ever happened, but I have a memory. I, I, and I don't know if I should be talking about this, but I think I ran into Again, Sam. Again, we're not recording. Yeah. Okay, good. Cool. <laughs> I think I ran into Sam Levine, mm -hmm. and I had the same thing happen to me where I was like, oh, I know that guy. Yeah. And I was really intoxicated. Yeah. And, uh, and I went up to him, and I was like, oh, I know you. I think we were in acting class together or something like that. And he was probably like, who is this guy? And yeah. then I started seeing him at, at poker tournaments, and then uh, yeah. in what was that movie? Uh, Glorious Bastards. Bastards. Yeah, and Glorious yeah. Bastards, and then he was on Entourage, and then it started yeah. to dawn on me, like, oh, shit. I'd made an ass of myself yeah. in front of that guy. Yeah. And now, well, you, you didn't go up to him and say, are you Jewish? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I did not do that, so. Anyway, who knows? Anyway. So where are you originally from? Originally from the East Coast, Delaware, born and raised, lived in New York for four, four and a half years. Started acting up there? I did. Did you mm -hmm. play any of the underground games there? Uh, oh. I did. Uh, there was a game that I don't know if exists anymore. Um, it was on 72nd and Broadway, mm -hmm. and you had to be in the club, you yeah. know? There's no, uh, when I got out here, I was like, oh my gosh, there's casinos, this is legal? I had no idea, yeah, it was right. great. Well, there we would have to go and hit a buzzer and go in, and, and it was pretty nice. It was clean and everything. I was like, this is great. I played a tournament, I got knocked out of the tournament, so I went to another place to play another game, and then I found out like that the tournament got busted about a half hour later. Wow. Everybody had to give up their chips, and people yeah. people went to jail. And yeah, they were crazy. busted a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, they went like crazy. They were getting games. robbed, and they right. were getting yeah. busted. A lot of robberies. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it was pretty obvious. They, cause they would hold these games in buildings, you know, mm -hmm. like where there were offices. And, yeah. You know, if you saw every night or a certain night at seven, eight o'clock, people going up to this one, you know, mm -hmm. floor. And it looked like poker player types. Right. I mean, these people weren't really good at get, uh, as far as like hiding it, I guess. Right. You know, counting their money in right. the elevator. And, right. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember like when The Sopranos was still going on, you had Robert Eiler get arrested. I don't think A Rod got arrested, but he was like yeah. busted for attending one. Mm -hmm. So was, was Macaulay just, Culkin. Yeah, Macaulay that was Culkin. The same That's game. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you play in his game at all, or have you played? Um, I, okay, well, I'll tell this story as quickly as yeah. possible. I, one time, before I started acting, I was doing anything to make money, so I did promo work, and I was doing one where he had to hand out stuff for a diamond store, so they gave us a tuxedo. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wore this, I got this tuxedo, and I went to take it back, and then I was like, hey, do you mind if I keep this for the night? And they were like, well, the company paid for it, you have it for 24 hours. So I was like, cool. So I was gonna go to this other party, and then my buddy called and said, hey, you wanna go to a poker game? It's at my buddy's house. I was like, sure. He goes, all right, uh, go down. It's like blah, blah, blah street fifth floor, whatever it was. I'm like, all right, cool. So we go there, and uh, I'm like, what's the apartment number? He's like, fifth floor. And I'm like, oh, okay. So we hit the thing to go up, and we go up. And uh, I ended up still having the tuxedo on, because I was in the city and didn't, couldn't go home and change. So I wore the tuxedo. The door opens up. It's this entire loft that he owns, and it's Max house. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and I'm wearing the tuxedo. That's Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin, yeah. yeah. We're on a you, you <laughs> first name <laughs> basis. <laughs> so anyway, I played there that night with Mac and a few other people. Was uh, Mila Kunis there? No, uh, she lives in LA, right? Yeah, yeah. They're so this was dating, though, right? Right, they've been dating That's for like the five biggest or six years. score for a guy, I mean, it's like, yeah. That's a great score if you're yeah, if you're me. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great score if you're yeah. anybody, yeah. let alone yeah. Colin I mean, Culkin. I mean, yeah. but then again, if you were uh, close to Michael Jackson, you yeah. deserve Emilio yeah. Kunis. That's true. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. the, uh, the reward. That's the reward. reward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd allow some Michael so Jackson you, fondling for that. Would you uh, <laughs> have an experience with Michael Jackson for Mila Kunis? Mm. If uh, great question, <laughs> kind of weird yeah. now. Yeah, actually, yeah, <laughs> we're breaking so many laws at this point. I'd say no. <laughs> hey, Bill, question for you. Yes. From uh, from Al can't hang, Jim's cheesesteaks or Claymont cheesesteaks? Oh, uh, I actually went to school right by Claymont Sub Shop on uh, Philly Pike, so 
I guess, uh, Claymont. Claymont. Although Capriati's I do love, which is downtown Wilmington. Yeah, I heard and that. And they just good. opened one up in Beverly Hills, is the word on the street. All right. Yeah. But I haven't been to the one out of here. So how long have you been out here? Five years. You like it? I do. I love it. If you, one show that's on TV right now that you get a roll on, what would it be? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I, I would say The Office. Are they still shooting that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd yeah. love to be on This that is show. like Michael Scott's last year, but then oh, wow. they're going to... Is gonna, he still on the next season? He's still on for this season, and then they're figuring out what to do, who to bring on. You would actually be good for, like, the warehouse kind of... Right, role, downstairs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love that one guy. What's what's his name on? that's in uh, Hot Tub Time yeah. Machine? Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. always he's, makes he's up words. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And he's on Eastbound and Down. That would be... I would love to be on that show. That yeah. would be... Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if Danny McBride, if you're watching... <laughs> oh, the other one, while I have, while yeah. I'm putting yeah. the things out into the, is Donal Logue. I always get told that I look like him. You do. And he's got a new show yeah. on A&E. Yeah. Uh, &E. Which I've heard really good things about. Uh, I know. It's supposed so, to be one of the five, four or five, yeah. like, of the only, I just listened to uh, Sports Guys podcast mm, okay. on the fall TV preview. Yeah. There's basically like four shows, five shows that's that, are one new, of them. that are worth a shit. And that's yeah. One. yeah. That would be great to get on that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for joining. Thanks for having me. Yeah, stick around if you can just for the next yeah. five minutes or so. Sure, yeah. Because we got one more one more person. We do. We have a uh, friend of Wicked Chops, our favorite cougar, mm -hmm. is going to be Skyping in. Michelle Lewis. Michelle Lewis. Are she you there? May, she may already Hi, be Michelle. there. I'm here. I saw Hi. you roll your eyes to the cougar <laughs> comment. Go Coug. Wait, you're pulling a uh, Lacey Jones there. You're in bed, aren't you? <laughs> no. Oh, this no? is my car. Your what? This is my car. I'm in my car. <laughs> okay. This is, yeah, it's a new hybrid. So how's it going? It's going well. So going we, well. I have feedback. Yeah, feed like Turn your radio feed? down. No, I don't know. I'm on a radio. It's, it's Wait, just like, it's just like chat roulette or your webcam. It's the same process. Yeah, it's fine. So, um, you know, the whole idea here is we have viewers on at the end of the show sometimes. Actually, never, but we're doing it now. Um, <laughs> we, we've tried. Yeah. <laughs> do you have right, anything to say about anything we talked about today? No, not really. Aww. Yeah, um, I'm kidding. No feedback for us. I always have us. something to say. <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about Alan Kessler and what a badass he is. Yeah, you have a thing with Alan, don't you? Like, I, I remember during the World Series, um, you two were kind of hanging out a little bit at uh, where was it? Uh, at the win, right? Kind of oh, we hanging out the, in the booth. We were Dor at the Doral's party. party. You were there. I think yeah. that was a little more of Colin trying to instigate something because you did a little something I, with Jeff Mastin as well. Colin, when we sat down, I felt we were. I felt like we were cock blocking Kessler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I> mean, <it's... laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's so talkative and all. Now, he's had, um, I think I saw on Twitter that he's had nine WSOP casts. He just cast um, in event three, I think, at the WSOP Europe. I mean, that's pretty nice, right? I mean, w does that help his chances at all with you? Oh, God. I'm speechless. It's, it's a miracle. Well, you're um, blushing right now, by the way. I am? Yeah. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, you know, that's, those are good skills. Got to have skills. So, uh, but it is impressive. Yeah. You know. Hey, we, uh, we're actually getting viewer questions for you, Michelle. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Believe sure. it or not, Al Can't Hang wants to know, who do you love more, him or Alan Kessler? <laughs> oh, Al. I love Al a lot. Al's great. Okay. So is Al your answer, or? Is that my final answer? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I guess Sorry, that goes Alan. Both ways. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you know love Al. You can't go wrong. You can't have anybody. More. Alan, Alan, you know, sends me private messages. He's in that group. Al is okay with you know proclaiming his love for me in public. So I'm, I think that's cool. All right. So what's going on in Houston right now? Well, nothing. It's hot, and I'm thinking about moving out there. So. Maybe I'll be out there soon. When you say out there, Vegas or L.A.? Not Vegas. I would not move to Vegas. Yeah. Uh, I should say that. This is permanent. Uh, to L.A. Yeah. And what do you, you've played in Atlantic City before, right? 
Never. I've never been to Atlantic City. Really? Mm -mm. That's probably a good gonna, thing. Yeah. Well, if I'm going to fly out of Houston, I'm either going to, I'm just, if I'm going to fly anywhere to go gamble, it's either, it's going to be Vegas. Yeah. It doesn't make sense for me to go to Atlantic City. And plus there's, I mean, it's, yeah, it is in Vegas. You fly in and then five minutes later, you're at your room. Where would you live in L.A.? Oh, um, probably Hermosa Beach. I heard it's nice there. Yeah, I've heard so. <laughs> All right, Michelle. Anything else that we talked about today that you want to chime in on? I know Colin's trying to set me up for that Jew thing. <laughs> That's right. You are, I always forget, you are Jewish, but not by your mom or birth. By, you by injection. By, uh, I converted. <laughs> Yeah. Would you take offense if somebody asked? I mean, it was, I think it was a simple question. Are you Jewish? Um, would you take offense to that? I guess it, could, it depends on the context. I mean, it's like, why is she asking that? I'd have to think that she's asking it because, uh, you know, it's the day after Yom Kippur, or two days after, or whatever. And maybe she was going to lecture on, you know, how you should be. I mean, you're supposed to be cleansed and not treat people that way, but at the same time, she's doing the same thing. You're not supposed to judge people without all the facts. That if if you had given me 1,000 guesses to what you were just about to say, I would not have guessed. It was a couple days after Yom Kippur, and she was thinking about being cleansed. Okay, I'll give you, well, tell me what you were going to say. I have no idea, <laughs> but it definitely wasn't the Yom Kippur angle. Really? Yeah. I'm oh. out of the loop. I didn't even know it was Yom Kippur. Sorry. Hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, you got the Asian thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what it is. Uh, no, oh. you know, people definitely need to have better manners in poker. You know, there's, it's, that's a hot commodity. Yeah, you know, I, I meant to ask Matt Savage that somewhat. I mean, we've seen, you know, you look at where poker's come from, and it's definitely cleaned up a little bit and become more sanitized. And then you have stuff like the Atlantic City incident. And, I mean, I think it's right. pretty typical for there anyway. Right. I mean, that stuff happens at the Taj nonstop, but um, you know, like whether or not we want poker to, you know, be, uh, you know, a little bit more sanitized. Straight, sanitized, I guess. Yeah. Or is you know part of it some of the you know the posturing and the calling people out and you know calling somebody a piece of shit or you know whatever. I mean, but that's you know, I think that's a part of poker. It's about egos yeah. and and testosterone somewhat. So. Yeah. Hey Michelle, one last question for you. And uh, do you know you know Nick Rainey, right? Pardon? Nick Who? Rainey. No. He's on. Uh, he's on the chat right now. He's been rumored to be Asian Spy. He claims that he's not. We've we've invited Asian Spy to be on today. Uh, I don't think we've heard from him. Who do you think Asian Spy is? I think it's Alan Kessler for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Wait, or maybe it's Kev Math. Rainey, people thought he was Asian Spy. Yeah, he's been asked if he's Asian. Yeah, it's funny you brought that up because Michelle actually she IM'd me before the show asking if I was Asian Spa. Really? I said yeah. Us being facetious. Come on, okay, I know. Okay, good, yeah. good. Okay. I forget what okay, I, I said. We'll explain you know the whole Asian Spa thing. Here's why I know. Because you're probably know. wondering what the fuck are you talking about. Uh, so <laughs> here's, one? here's why I know it wasn't Colin because whoever Asian Spa is, they they have a droid. They they their app that they use is Twitter for Droid or whatever. Colin Young. Colin has an iPhone. Wow, you're a detective. Yeah. All right, well, so we've I mean, narrowed it down to a droid user. Okay, Michelle. Yeah, that was difficult. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, for wrapping Thanks up. Thanks for having me. Thank you, yeah. Bill Parks. Thanks for having me. What do you want to plug? Um, community, mm -hmm. check it out. Uh, I'll be in the second and the fifth episode this season. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Bill underscore Parks. Great. Sweet. And buy a Snickers. Yeah. Brian, anything else? Our sponsor. Yeah, there we go. Our sponsor, Full Tilt Doubles Poker Championship. If everyone could do me a huge favor and uh, retweet what I just twat it. <laughs> twot. Twot. I just want to say twat it. <laughs> From the uh, at Wicked Chops account, thank you at Full Tilt underscore w s o p apostrophe s doubles poker on at g s n for this week in poker please retweet it thank them and uh closing the show or actually watch it when live can, when they when can they catch the episodes i was getting there this saturday on g s n at 9 p.m 
Eastern Time, 6 p.m. on the West Coast, and a uh, four-minute clip of this Saturday show coming up next. Nice. Thank you, and uh, we'll see you next week. Same time, except for 20 minutes earlier. <laughs> Does Lichtenberger actually make a mistake by calling with the Ace King, considering he only needed to avoid finishing in last? I think I like his play. With 35 points, he's almost certainly in the playoffs. It is true that third place would have locked him up a spot. But if you're not going to take a stand with Ace King, what are you going to take a stand with? Fair enough. Well, Benjamin's going to raise it up with Ace King. Action on Lichtenberger. Or Lishy, as I like to call him now. He's going to call with the Ace Six. Five, six, ace, top pair, top kicker for Oberstad and Benjamin. But Justin Smith and Lichtenberger with top two. Well, that's just silly. This is an extreme cooler situation. Justin Smith checks. Annette reaching for chips. And why wouldn't she? She's going to bet 3,600. She would love to see a raise here. Well, that's exactly what she's going to see. She gets the raise. There's some merit to just pushing here. Probably get called with the ace queen, the ace jack, maybe even the ace ten. If they're semi bluffing you with an open in straight draw or a gut shot, they can't call. We can see that they would call, though. They have top two pair aces and sixes. Oberstad makes the call. Pot now 22,100 ships. Turn is the eight of clubs. I really like Annette's play of just calling there, but it's going to be challenging for Benjamin. Unless she doesn't slow down. That's 14,400. Over to Benjamin. I would tend to call in his spot. Time. I was hoping you'd do that. I was really hoping you'd do that. I have a bad feeling. I think we should fold. If they risked a flat, would have got her they got there. Mm -hmm. They know we have an ace. I think we should fold. I really think they have a better hand. How would they play a uh, ace turn? I think they would just call the spot. They would just call the well, get there. You mean like one, one, one. Amazing instincts by Annette and a strongly voiced opinion. Benjamin's not so sure though. Seems very weak to fold Ace King to a bet here. Benjamin is in your school of thought. He makes the call. Needs a king or an eight on the river to win this. Really impressive instincts by Annette. Three of spades on the river. Changes nothing. Smith to speak. We're on. And he's all in. Just as we would expect. I don't know if you're expecting me to call or not, but... Wow, it's really tough to fold there. She's getting quite a price. Just a great read. Lichty and Smith stack the chips, while Benjamin and Oberstad will have to wait to see who was right.